I thought that I was familiar with Loctite Threadlocker, but then I read this statement in the directions for use. If two inactive metals are used, a primer is required. I did some Google research and found out that typical zinc plated nuts and bolts like these are inactive metals. Hmm. Time for an experiment. First, I ran out and got this can of primer or anaerobic activator and boxes of zinc plated nuts and bolts. Then I assembled two sets of test samples, one with plain nuts and bolts and the other with primer. The thread locker directions say to clean and dry the parts. I use grease and wax remover and 70% isopropyl alcohol. Shake well. Then apply and assemble the parts. I apply two drops and thread it on the nuts. The thread locker is supposed to set in 10 minutes and fully cure in 24 hours. For the primed or activated samples, the directions say to First, clean and dry the surfaces that I already did. Then apply the activator to the bonding surfaces. Allow to dry for three to five minutes. Apply the anaerobic adhesive or thread locker and assemble the parts. I apply two drops and thread it on the nut. Five non-activated and five activated samples were assembled. One of each were tested every 24 hours over five days. The breakaway and prevailing torques were logged. According to the Loctite 271 technical data sheet, the breakaway torque of 3 8 by 16 zinc plated nuts and bolts should be 40 to 125 inch pounds or 3.3 to 10.4 foot pounds. And the prevailing torque should be 150 to 300 inch pounds or 12.5 to 25 foot pounds. I use this 3 8 inch ratchet. Torque adapter, 9 16 inch socket, and a breaker bar. The nut was turned 90 degrees for the breakaway torque, and 360 degrees for the prevailing torque. The prevailing torque is the force needed to turn the nut after it has been broken free. After 24 hours, the non activated sample was placed in a vise and the breakaway torque was measured at 15.8 foot pounds. The prevailing torque, 8.4 foot pounds. An activated sample was next, and the breakaway torque measured 18.3 foot pounds. The prevailing torque, 17.6 foot pounds. After 48 hours, non activated, breakaway torque, 13.6 foot pounds. Prevailing torque, 9.6 foot pounds. Activated, breakaway torque, 19.8 foot-pounds. Prevailing torque, 18.5 foot-pounds. After 72 hours, non-activated, breakaway torque, 20.2 foot-pounds. Prevailing torque, 14.7 foot-pounds. Activated, breakaway torque, 16.2 foot pounds. Prevailing torque 13.5 foot pounds. After 96 hours, non activated, breakaway torque 18.7 foot pounds. Prevailing torque 13.3 foot pounds. Activated, breakaway torque 17.7 foot pounds. Prevailing torque, 14.8 foot-pounds. And finally, after 120 hours, non-activated, breakaway torque, 13.3 foot-pounds. Prevailing torque, 10 foot-pounds. Activated, breakaway torque, 19 foot-pounds. Prevailing torque, 14.9 foot-pounds. And here is a summary of the breakaway torques. All non-activated and activated breakaway torques were above the top end of the specified range. The average breakaway torque of the activated samples was a bit higher than the non-activated samples. 
and the longer cure times didn't seem to affect the bond strength. And the prevailing torques? The non-activated prevailing torques hovered around the low end of the specified range, and the activated samples just above the low end. The average prevailing torque of the non-activated samples was just below the specified range. And for the activated samples, it was just above the low end of the range. And the longer cure times didn't seem to affect the bond strength of the prevailing torques either. Using the primer or activator seemed to help a bit, but was not a game changer that I thought it might be. Results will vary for different applications. You decide if it's something you'd like to add to your tool chest. If I got something wrong, hit me in the comments.